course I had to try and film with a camera that had neither a memory card <laughs> or a battery. <laughs> okay, that made absolutely no sense. I'm so sorry. Um, I thought I'd give it a shot and then realize it was a very bad idea. Hi everyone, welcome back. How are you all doing today? So, reacting to the next one, the next Japanese episode, episode 7, Solo Trip to Japan, Surprise Calligraphy Lesson, and we are just re-watching these videos while waiting for the borders to reopen. Guys, I have a small update uh, regarding this. Of course, as usual, I want to talk to you about the hashtag education is not tourism. All the links about it is below and it's to spread awareness. I don't really like that word, but for lack of a better word, spread awareness about us international students who have been stranded outside of Japan without any information nor communication from the Japanese government in almost a year and a half now we have been waiting. At least in my case, it's been a year and a half and that's what I want to tell you guys is that I think that I have come to the decision, a little bit of a forced decision I must say, but it is my decision nonetheless, that if the borders do not reopen by October of this year, October of 2021, I'm going to have to give up for now or just fully give up on this project because I am fully at my limits. I can't wait anymore, I can't put my life on hold anymore. I can't stay at my parents anymore, I can't stay without a job anymore, I mean it's just everything has been so messed up in on so many levels which is why I'm trying to push this hashtag education is not tourism, like really trying to get this message out there that our lives are being effed up because they there is no communication from them, from the Japanese government. But um, on my end, definitely, I'm completely at my limits. Uh, my health is starting to decline again. So um, if it doesn't happen by this October, I'm going to have to find a job and figure out a way to move out pretty fast, like before the end of the year. And it's not easy and it hasn't been easy. And I don't want to go on and on about it because I, I'm feeling myself tearing up about it because it, it sucks. I can't even explain how much it sucks but I think that it has to be I, ha I have to make a decision if the Japanese government doesn't speak up if they won't just give us something to hang on to I'm just gonna have to say you know what screw it I'm going to have to move on with my life and maybe Later in the future, I'll try again, maybe not with a student visa. I don't feel like I'm at an age where I want to keep on studying indefinitely, but who knows? Who knows? It's still a little early. I'm still a little hopeful that something will change. This is why I keep pushing everything and doing these interviews and promoting these events and, you know, even re-watching live events. Just share it, talk about it, and with a bit of luck now that the Olympics are over. October might be a time where international students will be let in, but if it doesn't happen, I'm just going to have to remove myself from this project. And my voice is shaking and cracking and I don't want to get too emotional talking about it, but um, the truth is that I am at my limit. Sorry, I did not mean to get this emotional. Um, I, as usual, I want these, these reaction videos to be light and fun and, you know, reminiscing and me telling about like these little uh, backstories that I might have forgotten. But I thought I might as well share this news with you, even though it's a decision that I took just a few days ago and it's not like set in stone or anything, but if something good doesn't happen soon, as in the borders reopen, 
I win the lottery or a lot of money that will allow me to go stay somewhere else and I have to worry about food and rent and stuff um, I don't know, something magical needs to happen or I'm just gonna have to like give up and start from scratch um, I'm tearing up again so let's stop talking about that and let's do something a little more fun which is watching this episode as usual starting with the uh, searching of the right and left side squinting my eyes um, from this episode what can I remember I remember of course that it was raining that it was actually raining a lot a lot a lot and I stumble across something completely unexpected which took up I think most of the morning if not like a part of early afternoon I don't remember what I did after I stumble onto this little I'm saying like it's a surprise and unexpected and like ooh, what could it be but it's like the title of this video <laughs> but you guys will see uh, I have a little bit of backstories to tell about that day that I remember I don't know what I mentioned in this video I just have two things that I remember doing that day but nothing in the afternoon so let's let's see <laughs> good morning everybody as you can see we have terrible weather again today um, right now I'm at Nipori and today is gonna be a day where I go to the things that I realize that uh, have been on my list and that I have yet to go visit. So, uh, the day before last in Tokyo, so I'm gonna make the most of it in this rain or without the rain. I'm just gonna walk around and have fun. I've got a sign. I forgot about that. Okay. <laughs> I'm cringing at myself saying like sugoi sugoi, but I mean the rest of it isn't too bad, like so this and mmm and but I already have picked up a few like Japanisms I guess. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm cringing at myself so much, it's not that bad, but I think I'm cringing at how awkward I felt. I mean, obviously I felt like adventurous, I was talking to the people, and I actually went up and like drew on this big, um, I want to say sheet thing. Uh, and then the master completed it and made a beautiful moon and then there was this other lady she had this book with all the kanji like ancient kanji I hope they're not watching this I still have them on social media which is crazy uh, I have them both on my Facebook I think uh, which is like insane like some things like just stick after you've traveled to Japan even if you never talk again you can still like see what they're doing and I'm like seeing all the uh, new grandchildren I, they're not a couple but like from each family um, it's really cool yeah I just stumbled into this calligraphy exhibit and I think that I asked if I could film and just asking that opened up the conversation from 
I'm gonna say the receptionist, but I don't know what she was doing. This other lady was doing there, but the receptionist who spoke some English, and then um, I think she, she suggested maybe that I go like draw something, and then we all got to talking. Uh, then like talking about my artist's name, which is Ikutri. So this is why she was showing me different ways that I could write Iku. Um, I think she explained that it was, it could also mean like giving birth, but it could also be seen like interpreted in a creative way, like creating, which was really amazing. I did try to explain this to my uh, Japanese hosts, like from the, the from the hostel, they didn't understand it, so maybe I got it wrong, or maybe it's too much of an obscure kanji. Um, what happens after that is that I uh, joined the little class, which was paying, but it wasn't very expensive. Uh, and first, I practiced on the newspaper to draw the iku kanji, and then I do it on a little. Um, paper like on this little postcard thing um, which I don't think I did too bad but for the number of <laughs> newspaper uh, trials I did I think it wasn't too bad it was really incredible to have this experience to have made that connection that day oh there you go I don't like the arrow thing the rest is okay they decide where the stamp is put because it's just as important to the composition as the kanji itself. Now that I'm looking at what I did, it kind of... <laughs> no comment. <laughs> so there you go, she's helping me out. I stayed there so long, I think I was such a perfectionist. I, I feel a bit bad because I may have used up like a lot of their newspaper to try. See, I think the character giving birth is okay, but then the child is kind of like weird looking. <laughs> but obviously this is like a prized possession of mine, I obviously still have it somewhere. It was on my wall for a very long time. Oh my god, I even filled the book! Good on me, I forgot about that. See, those characters are much nicer. They flow. Okay. I don't remember what I was looking for, sadly. But, I mean, looking for something that wasn't there happened more than one time. It probably was there, but I got lost. That wouldn't, um, <laughs> probably what happened. It was just rain, you know? I'm swearing to the music like it'll still be there. I'll have to remove it for copyright, sadly. Well, like I remember it was like this little walk in the rain and you finally get to Meiji Shrine. And it was my second attempt to go there. Like, come on. It was beautiful. <laughs> it really made it traumatic. I love myself for that. And it was just closed. Well, not closed, but it was just under construction. <laughs> Welcome back. Still raining. So cold. But this might be my last stop for today. One of the things I hadn't seen yet is Tokyo Tower. I recognize Robongi. So this is what I'm doing now. I'm walking. Oh, it's so sad in the rain. So gloomy. <laughs> this is what I'm climbing towards to. I don't think I've ever been in Tokyo Tower. I I go see it, I'm like, hi, <laughs> film it like this, but I don't think I've ever been inside it. It was such a crappy rainy day today that I decided to go back <laughs> to the onsen that I went to yesterday because I love it so much. It feels so good when you come out and you're all warm. Look at my skin is like evaporating in the cold air, and I just feel so good and relaxed now after being frustrated with the weather. <sighs> that 
sounds amazing. Anyway, this is a Jakutsu, Jakutsu, I believe, Jakutsu Onsen right behind me. It's one of the only real onsens in Tokyo and who will accept tattooed people. So definitely recommend going to this one. I still love that ending track that is copyrighted like on most of my friggin videos now very frustrating it wasn't a copyrighted track when i got it i actually enjoyed that episode more than i thought i don't think i think it's one of my least watched japan videos i have a feeling but it was really fun to remember it i don't know if it's fun to watch because it's true that i don't do much on that day because i ended up going back and forth and getting lost and getting frustrated and obviously when you're frustrated you don't want it to be seen on your face so i know i didn't film or maybe cut out a lot of that when I was editing um, but from, from what I remember I do remember the temple at the beginning I definitely remember that calligraphy class I think that was the highlight of the day and of the video I do remember Meiji I don't remember it was on the same day but I remember, remember Meiji's shrine and I remember the walk up and not feeling that inspired sadly but mainly the rain is at fault here uh, and I do remember arriving there and just being like, seriously, seriously, <laughs> that was just too bad. Um, I do remember that little night walk in Oropongi, even though it's raining, I was in better spirits, I think. It just felt nice because it was this nice light, as you can kind of see on the camera, it was this nice light, it was this nice ambiance, like the day was almost over. There were the lights of the Tokyo Tower, I went inside, like the little reception area, didn't go up obviously. It was a nice little ending to what I seem to be saying was a very shitty day but it was probably this feeling of just being cold in hungry you know like you can get really oh, definitely i can get very dramatic if i'm cold and hungry uh because watching this now where i'm warm and you know safe inside it doesn't seem like such a bad day but obviously i've been around in the rain for quite a few days now so i can understand where i'm coming from and you can definitely see like on my face how much better I feel after that hot onsen bath. It makes me want to want to. It makes me want an onsen so bad. Anyway, as usual, guys, um, leave me your questions. Leave me your recommendations. I know that uh, Jack will see you. We finally know the name. Has inspired some people to go to that onsen in Tokyo uh, as the foreigners with tattoos. So I'm really glad about about that, about that discovery and being able to share it. So feel free to share your own discoveries, uh, your own advice. Uh, feel free to ask questions, like I said. Um, there's one more episode in Tokyo before going to Osaka. I'm getting really excited, but it definitely makes me want to go to Japan, but I'm not going to think about that. Otherwise, I'm going to start crying again i'm just gonna say education is not tourism me and bachi thank you all for watching thank you all for being here please give this video a like give this video a comment to show youtube that people are watching it and interacting with it maybe it will boost maybe my ad sense a little bit maybe rewatch the video without your ad blocker i'm sorry i'm doing this again for like the millionth time being like yeah the situation is critical but truth is the situation is critical again and now more than ever so gonna just keep my chin up and invite you to do the same keep your chin up however hard things may be and as usual if you could if you just can't today if you're just done with everything wrap yourself in a burrito blanket take it easy i'll see you in the next one guys we can do this. Whatever happens, good or bad, we will find a way out of this. I'll worry you.